All right, so now we're going to do a couple more of these examples. This is Rogowski 404, number 22. Um, it's integral of x to the negative fifth, ln x dx. We'll do some uh, definite integrals next, um, but I just want to do a couple more of these. So um, the idea is um, u is a function that you want to differentiate. So if you have ln x, that's pretty much going to be u because you don't know how to anti-differentiate ln of x, so it's going to be you're going to want to differentiate it. That makes the x to the negative fifth with the dx is dv. All right, so what we're saying is that u is ln x, du is 1 over x dx, dv is x to the negative fifth dx, and v is, well, I anti-differentiate this, so it's going to be um, raise the exponent 1 and get x to the negative fourth over negative 4. So maybe nice to write that as negative 1 fourth x to the negative fourth. All right, so then my first next step is to rewrite uh, our integral up here. I need to write it as uh, uv minus the integral of v du. So my uv, see the nice thing about laying the chart out is you can just sort of follow it here. Uh, uv is going to be a negative one-fourth. I'm just going to put these in a sort of a reasonable order. x to the negative fourth ln x minus the integral of, I need to do um, v du. So I'm going to have uh, negative one-fourth x to the negative fourth times 1 over x dx. All right, looks a little crazy, but we can simplify that quite a lot. So now I have negative 1 fourth x to the negative 1 fourth, negative fourth ln x. We can make this a plus, you know, bring out that uh, minus sign. We can also bring out the 1 fourth, might make our world easier a little bit. And then integral of, so I have x to the negative fourth times 1 over x. That should be pretty clearly that that's x to the negative fifth dx. All right, and then that's easy to integrate, so it's negative 1. Let, let's put this negative 1 over 4, x to the 4th, ln x, why not? This is a little, little cleaner. Um, plus 1 fourth, so I'm going to raise that 1, so I have x to the negative 4th over negative 4. Put my plus c, let's just clean it up a little. Maybe negative like ln x over 4x 4th, that'd be nice. Uh, minus uh, 1 over 16x to the 4th plus c. If you want to be a little wacky, let's get a common denominator. Why not? So that would be, because um, I'd have to multiply this one top and bottom by 4. So negative 4 ln x minus 1 over 16x to the 4th. That's just fun. You could leave it like that. You could leave it like that. That's fun. Fine. All right. So that is number 22. I also wanted to do uh, number 30 from this page, just to um, remind you a little bit of uh, uh, an oft-forgotten uh, antiderivative you can do. So I have uh, number 30 is integral of x5 to the x dx. All right, so it, if I have just an x by itself, a lot of times I'm going to want that to be u because when I do the derivative, it'll go away. All exponential functions are good candidates for dv because when I anti-differentiate them, they don't get any more complicated. They, get, they just stay the same. All right, so this is going to be my u and this is going to be my dv. Um, so I have uh, u equals x, du equals, it equals 1 dx, but I can just put dx. And then I have uh, dv equals 5 to the x. Now here's the thing, you have to remember what the antiderivative of 5 to the x is. So you have to, that's why I wanted to do this. If, if you have like two, two ones that people forget, this log base a, what is the derivative of that? And a to the x, what is the derivative of that? So since the derivative of a to the x is a to the x ln a, and ln a is just a constant, that means the antiderivative of a to the x is a to the x divided by ln a. So the v here is going to be 5 to the x over ln 5. That's the whole key to that one. So then uh, my integral that I had at the beginning is equal to, if I think of uv minus the integral of v du, that's what the whole thing is, x times 5 to the x over ln 5, so x 5 to the x over ln 5, there's lots of different ways to write that, minus the integral of um, v du, so v du, so it's going to be um, 5 to the x over ln 5 dx, 5 to the x over ln 5 dx, sorry that's a little sloppy. Um, I'm going to pull out the 1 over ln 5 anyway, because you got to remember in all of this, the ln 5 is just a constant. It's not a function, so you can just treat it like it was 4 or something. So I'm going to have this be minus 1 over ln 5, uh, integral of 5 to the x dx, and then once again I have to remember that the antiderivative of 5 to the x is 5 to the x over ln 5. It's the only reason I wanted to do this example. It's a straightforward, simple example, but I just wanted to remind you of this antiderivative 
lest ye forget. So this is x to the 5x over ln 5 um, minus, so then this is going to be 5 to the x over ln 5. So, uh, well, let's go ahead and write it out. ln 5 times 5 to the x over ln 5. It would be nice to condense that down a little bit to x 5 to the x over ln 5 minus 5 to the x over ln of 5 squared. It's tempting to do something with the exponent here, but the exponent is not inside the log, it's outside. So I'm pretty much stuck with ln of 5 squared. That doesn't simplify. You could, if you want to be crazy, get a common denominator here. Oh, let's not. Let's, let's just not. Okay, there you go. There's 22 and 30. Next up, we're going to look at... Um, we, how is this going to shift if instead of every single one I've done so far has been an indefinite integral? What if it was a definite integral? All right, that's what we're going to look at next.